Challenge 11 in the beginner's series of the Reddit Cat Challenges, where I'll be showing you how I would solve Challenge 11 using Solve Space. So let's take a look at the object down here. It looks like this object can be divided into two parts. We have a base and then two parts that stick up, each one with a slot that goes through it. We have a concave fillet at both ends here, and then what looks like a convex fillet at the edges of those two parts that stick up. When it comes to drawing a sketch, I would ask myself, which is the best side to draw from? Well, in my opinion, it's the side looking down. I'll be starting the sketch of the base first and then minimizing my workflow by just creating one of those pieces that stick up and then reusing that piece twice. So let's get started. First, let's select the line segments tool, create a line first, and I'll stop there because I want to make sure that this line is proportioned correctly first. So the length of the line there is 40, 50, 64 millimeters. So I'll select the line and click here, constrain distance, type in 64, and now I can carry on. We don't yet have a closed contour, that's okay. We're just beginning to sketch out the base first. Let's make this one 75 millimeters. So I'll select it, hit D on the keyboard, or click this button here and type in 75. And as always, I like to put, where possible, my measurements outside of the sketch. Now I want to make these two lines equal to each other, so I'll select them and click here, constraint equal length. Now let's work at the concave fillet, so I'll select the arc tool, click here first, and drag out like this. And I'll try and get it as close as I can to what it looks like in the sketch. Let's draw another one up here. Radius of this arc is 20 millimeters, so its diameter will be 40. Now I want these two arcs to be equal to each other, so I'll select them both and click here, constraint equal length. Line segments tool, and let's just draw two lines going across. Clicking on this one, constraining it to be horizontal, selecting them both and making them equal. Now, even though these two lines are equal in length, you'll see that this point is slightly further ahead than this one. And that's because we can change the angle between this line and the arc at this point and this point. And we'll come, we'll come to that in a second. The next thing I need to do now is make sure that this line is tangent to the curve of the arc at this point, so I'm highlighting here. And there is an easy way of doing that in Solve Space. You just select them both and click this button. Constraint to be tangents. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's complete the contour now with the arc tool again. And let's make this arc equal to one of the other two. And now if I select this arc and click the distance button, you will see that this arc now has the same diameter as both of the other two. Okay, I'm going to continue constraining this shape now because we've got five degrees of freedom left. Select the line tool. I'm going to convert this line into a guideline, so I'll select it and click G on the keyboard. And I want the center of the shape to be at the midpoint of this line. So I'll select them both and click M on the keyboard. I want this point, this, the point which represents the center of this arc to be horizontal uh, with respect to the origin. So I'll select these two points and click H on the keyboard. The reason for doing that now is to constrain these two points or the angle between this line and the arc line. We've now got two degrees of freedom. There's one other thing I need to do, and that is to constrain this line to be tangent to this curve at this point, so I'll select them both and click here. And now these two points are equal. We've got one degree of freedom left. We need to constrain the length of this here, so let's do that. I'll select the line segments tool, draw a line like that, select it, click G on the keyboard to make a guideline. I'll select this point now for a datum point, or click P on the keyboard, click on the arc, making sure that this point is horizontal with respect to the center of the arc. And now I can constrain the distance from this point to this line by 70 millimeters. 
we've got a zero degrees of freedom and we can now extrude this model by clicking here and let's give it the extruded depth of 12 millimeters now let's draw the holes i want to create a sketch at this face so let's do that i'll select this point and click here selecting the circle tool i'll click at the center here and then just drag out and click again to release the diameter should be 12 millimeters so what's whatever is white is the current sketch and whatever is brown is the previous sketch let's draw two more circles i'll try not to snap it against anything over here let's select them both and make them equal by clicking constraint equal length let's make them horizontally aligned to each other by selecting the centers and clicking here and now i've got four degrees of freedom because each can be moved in the XY plane. Let's constrain the distance between them to be 34 millimeters. Now let's constrain this point and the origin to be vertically aligned. And we can constrain it further by drawing two guidelines now, one from the center of one of the circles to the origin. Rem remembering to highlight the line and clicking G on the keyboard. And let's repeat it on the other side. And now I can say that I want this line and this line to be equal to each other by clicking here. Zero degrees of freedom, so let's extrude those two circles, and we need to take the difference. So in the properties panel, we click difference, and using the middle mouse button, I can click and rotate the model, selecting one of the points that's been extruded and the bottom face of the base, and then clicking constraint point on plane. And now we've got the base done. So I'll go to file, save as, and I'll save this as a soft space file and I'll just call it base and save it wherever I want. Now that we've saved that, I'll go to file and new. Let's now create one of those pieces that stick up with the slots going through it. Selecting the rectangle tool, I'll just roughly create an outline of that. I want the length of it to be 75 millimeters and the width to be 12 millimeters. Let's anchor this by selecting any points on the sketch and the origin and clicking constraint points on points. Zero degrees of freedom, let's extrude and select one of the extruded axes and give it a depth of 40 millimeters. Next thing is to create the fillets and the slots and I want those two to be created at this face. So to create a new sketch at that face, I'll select these two lines and that point and click here. I found that the best way to do this part is to start at the slot, selecting the line segments tool. Let's just create a rough sketch for the slot first, selecting these two horizontal lines and making them equal to each other by clicking Q on the keyboard or hitting this button here, and then selecting the arc tool. Let's now make sure that this line is tangent to the arc at this point. So I'll select them both and click constraint to be tangent. And the same thing on the other side. If we look at the draft, you can see that the slot is represented by these two dashed lines here and here. And it looks like the outer edge of the arc is seven millimeters from this line. And at this point is seven millimeters from this line. So let's add those constraints in now. Let's start here, selecting the point on the line and constraining the distance to be seven millimeters. And we need to put a point on this arc. So I'll select the points tool, click on the arc, and then making sure that the new points and the center of the arc are horizontally constrained with each other. Now I can constrain the distance between these two points to be seven millimeters. And let's do the same thing on the other side. And you'll notice as well here that I need to constrain this line to be tangent to the curve. We've got one degree of freedom left, and that's because we need to constrain the diameters now of the two outer arcs. And we're not given that information specifically in the draft, but it suggests to us that the space between these two dashed lines and the diagram down here and these two lines are very similar, or if not equal. So I'll make the diameter of this to be 10 millimeters. Now we've got zero degrees of freedom on the slots. Let's start now at the fillets. So I'll select the arc tool again to make sure that this line is tangent with the line of the arc. The way I do it is to select the center of the arc and one of these points and this point 
and click V to make them vertically aligned. And the same thing with the other to make them horizontally aligned. Let's complete the contour. Now I'll constrain these two arcs to be equal to each other. And we've got one degree of freedom left because we need to constrain the diameters of those arcs now. If you look closely at this rendered image, you see that uh, we have a line here and here. And that, that corresponds to, to this point, which I'm highlighting here. It looks like this line um, is above this point in the diagram, just like that. And therefore, it looks like when this was designed, um, they used a common circle, one for the fillet and one for the outer diameter of the slot. To select this point and the center and make them vertical to each other. And now we've got zero degrees of freedom. We can extrude the model, middle click and rotate. In the properties panel, taking the difference and you'll see that we have some rendering issues here. And the way around that is to click on the checkbox uh, force nerb surface triangle mesh. It's partly occluded by the diagram there, but click on it, the error message disappears, and now I can carry on. I'll select one of the points and the face and constrain that point to be on that face. We have another piece done. So let's save this as another soft space file. I'm going to call this slot piece. Okay. Let's go to File and click New. Let's now open our base sketch. So I'll go to File. Now I want to import what I've just created, that slot piece. So I'll go to a new group and let's head down to Link Assemble. And I'll select the slot piece model and you'll notice that it looks hollow. And that's because there was a rendering issue where we had to force nerb surface to triangle mesh. I don't fully understand why that happens sometimes. That's because I still, I'm still learning about soft space. There is a way around this now. You just click that same tick box again. Force nerb surface to triangle mesh. And now we have a proper model. I want this piece to be over here, where this point is overlaid at this point, but see what happens when I try and do that. I select them both and click Constraint Point on Points, and you'll see that the orientation of that imported model has changed. So the first thing we need to do is strain the orientation of that imported model. And there is a way to do that. I'm going to select the normal line parallel with the z-axis on the imported model and also on the base model and click this button. Constrain normals to have the same orientation. Now when I do the same thing and select these two points and constrain one to be on top of the other, you see that they're properly orientated now. There's two things I can do now. I can either repeat the process by bringing in another model, but I want to show you a button that I've not used before in these videos, and it's this one. It's to repeat new group step and repeat translating. So if I click on it, it's now repeated the imported model three times and staggered them. So in the properties panel here, you see that we have a three times repeat. So let's change that to two. And now if I rotate and select this point and this point and make them overlaid with each other, it looks now we have a completed model and I, I can hide everything in the properties panel. But I think that looks okay from my point of view anyway. So I'll see you in the next video for challenge 12.